Okay, our next talk is bringing GNOME home to Ubuntu with Tim Lunn. So give me a round of applause, please. Hey, everyone. So I'm Tim. I'm one of the co-founders and technical lead of um, Ubuntu GNOME. And I thought I'd sort of just start with a bit of history um, about the project and sort of why we started it. So going back a few years now, um, but this is the first time I've been to Gladex, so um, we started in 2012, sort of just as Ubuntu had switched to Unity and we wanted GNOME 3 um, and we wanted it on Ubuntu, so <coughs> we decided to make our own distro or um, spin of Ubuntu. Um, and really, at that, that, that point, uh, GNOME Shell and GDM, everything was really broken on Ubuntu. So we um, you know, worked through the core integration, integration bugs and um, patched a lot of things to get it, get it going. Um, and then in 2013, we had our first official release as an official Ubuntu flavor. Um, and 14, <coughs> 2014, we released our first uh, long-term support um, version. And then 1704 will be our last uh, standalone release because obviously Canonicals moved back to GNOME on the desktop. So basically, um, our original sort of goals of starting up the project was really to provide a, you know, a, a pure GNOME experience on Ubuntu. <coughs> um, and yeah, we did, we did pretty well at that, I think. Um, we, we wanted to work as closely as possible with upstream, and um, I think the majority of the patches we did did go upstream. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the GDM work and all that was all upstream. And then the other thing, which never really worked out that well, was we really wanted to encourage upstream comp contributions through Ubuntu. Uh, but unfortunately, we never really um, managed to find any other uh, developers um, to sort of help us out. We did, we um, managed to build a really strong community with testers and artwork and marketing and translators, but uh, yeah, getting other developers on board was always tricky. Um, some of the challenges we had, well, uh, the big one was a lot of the uh, GNOME packages on Ubuntu are heavily patched. Um, and whenever we wanted to update a library or something, we had to make sure we didn't break Unity as well, so there was a lot of overlap there. <coughs> um, and a lot of patches to update, because often Ubuntu didn't want the new library version, but we needed it to be able to keep running the new shell. Um, obviously, as I mentioned before, it was really hard to um, find other developers. I think a lot of that is it's quite hard to <coughs> get, get set up. Um, and th there's no easy way for them to be able to you know, you just jump in and start developing. They've got to jump through all hoops and sort of learn how to do all the packaging. And, um, yeah. And I guess the other thing was we got a lot of kickback sort of from people who just assumed our project was a canonical-based project. Um, they never seemed to realise that we were a community project. Um, they just sort of thought, yeah, we're part of canonical, which um, was never the case. Um, so, yeah, now um, Canonical dropped Unity. Um, they're moving towards, well, the transition is in progress at the moment to move, um, move to a GNOME desktop on Ubuntu. It's still probably um, not as pure as we would like, but we'll, we'll do something um, to sort of... Um, make that available to the users that still want it. Uh, 
Um, and so really, you know, one of the things we want to remain as a community team that still has some influence over the desktop on Ubuntu um, and where it's going, we will um, transition our users across to Ubuntu um, and they will get the default Ubuntu GNOME ex or the, the new Ubuntu experience. Um, if they don't like that, we'll provide some way for them to um, be able to get a more vanilla sort of uh, GNOME, like the, what they were used to previously um, with our distro. Um, and then, I guess, because they w we won't have that big overlap with Unity, um, me and Jeremy will have a, a lot more time um, to actually get more involved again with upstream work rather than running around um, sort of patching or fixing patches that were for Unity um, and stuff like that. Yep. Yep, and that's it. Uh, do you have any questions? Hi there. Um, is this working? Okay. Uh, so my question is the following. You mentioned that the next Ubuntu, the next version of Ubuntu, wouldn't have a pure GNOME or a GNOME as pure as you would like. Uh, now, there were two surveys that the Ubuntu desktop team did uh, in the last few months. One was regarding default extensions, and one was regarding default apps that would be included in the next version of, of Ubuntu. Uh, so what should we make out of this? Um, should we expect a different kind of Ubuntu distribution that's not, that doesn't look like the original GNOME that will have custom extensions and custom apps installed, or we have a, a default experience? Um, um, well, what's your take on this? It, it's, it's mostly the default GNOME, but it will have you know, a different theme. doesn't use the Adweta theme. Okay. Um, they're talking about uh, including some extensions by default. Um, I'm not sure about the app selection at this point, but I think long term, it won't. The transition won't be finished for the next release. Um, probably uh, for the next LTS in 2018, once everything falls into place. Okay. Thanks. So you mentioned uh, users thinking that you were uh, part of Canonical, this project. Yeah. So what expectations did that bring? That uh, like Were they expecting more than what they got, or, or, or less, or, or like uh, support or something? I certainly think they were expecting more, and they kind of expect every little issue to get fixed instantly. Um, and yeah, they just didn't seem to understand that we're a small community you know, doing it in our spare time. Um, they just yeah, assumed that we're part of the big big canonical group. Um, thanks for all your work so far on this. And um, to what challenges are you expecting, um, particularly from users that get the GNOME experience um, when they move from Unity? Um, I guess part of it is, you know, what will Canonical want to do um, as far as deviating away from what we consider a pure GNOME desktop um, and then being able to somehow keep that desktop available for users. How did the decision happen to um, have Ubuntu GNOME become the default Ubuntu and not um, having the default Ubuntu becoming a, a separate GNOME? Um, we weren't really involved in the decision. We just got told about it, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So 
So when the, this transition was announced by Canonical, uh, Mark Shuttleworth uh, wrote a blog post, a Google Plus post or something, where he said he was looking forward to shipping GNOME uh, the way it, was in, it is intended to be shipped by upstream, which was very exciting for uh, the GNOME community, I believe, and very surprising as well. Uh, but uh, so far from listening to your talk, it, it sounds like that's kind of gone out the window because it sounds like you're planning to use like custom themes and uh, uh, not our default set of applications, which is which is uh, 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 carefully curated uh, it's, and uh, shell extensions that obviously are not installed as well. So, so, so uh, uh, I, I take it, uh, ha has there been like a change in heart from Mark or? Has uh, um, what, what, what's, well, uh, what's happening Mark, here? But I guess a lot of it is that they're going to be transitioning users from Unity um, across to GNOME, and they probably don't want the transition to be too abrupt. So yeah, it it won't be radically different to what Upstream envisioned, but there will be changes, and it will still look like Ubuntu rather than. Fedora or Ubuntu GNOME. So I find it's better use of GNOME, uh, but if you say they're going to be looking more like Ubuntu, it's going to be half like the closing and the maximizing button on the left or in the right? <laughs> um, Ubuntu GNOME had the default upstream settings. I'm not 100% sure what it will be like in the next Ubuntu. Okay. I just imagine like the users will be confused again, and it will be an, the user will get confused again, and they will get some kind of flower as well. Yeah. Um, okay. Thanks. If, if okay, so. There will be a lot of users that will upgrade their current existing Unity installations to Ubuntu 17.10 or Ubuntu 18.04. How will the migration process, how will the application migration process go? Because there may be some incompatibilities between how apps looked on Unity versus how apps will look in GNOME, They're, even though Unity is based on GNOME. Um, how does, how, how do you plan on, on dealing with this and you know dealing with the confusion that users will have when upgrading to, to a new release um, <laughs> I think they're just gonna have to deal with it okay but yeah um yeah the Ubuntu theme probably will look s or sort of does look similar in some ways to the old unity um, most of the apps were already there um, like we have been using all the GNOME apps for the most part on Ubuntu, so it may not be a massive, massive transition for the users. Yep. Yeah. Um, so I'm from the Canonical desktop group. Um, we haven't made our final decisions yet on extensions and things like that. We're trying to. Uh, see what will uh, uh, ease the transitions for our users the best. We haven't really decided, I don't think, for the buttons yet either, finally. Um, I don't think we have a strong opinion one way or the other, whether they should be on the left or the right. Um, and we included that in our survey we did, and that, the results from that were actually split down the middle. Uh, it seems like the people who actually answered it, half of them wanted them on the left, half on the right. Um, <laughs> now, when we made the change to move them to the left, there was a lot of backlash. A lot of people were very upset about it, and I'm sure a lot of people will be upset when we move them to the right because now they've gotten used to them on the left. So um, I think any way we look at it, it's going to upset some people. Um, we do want to stay as close as we can to the upstream, but we do want to maintain some branding, from my understanding. So, like our, and we fixed a lot of the bugs in our GTK theme. Uh, the theme in particular had some bugs when running under uh, Gunnum Shell before. Um, and those issues have all been fixed as far as I know. Um, so I think the apps should look pretty good now, um, particularly like the header bar issues and stuff. I think those are all resolved now. Um, so, and I think we're gonna be doing, uh, discussing some more this week during the unconference, uh, the topic of extensions and uh, what we might wanna ship. Uh, I think 
during the Gnome Shell buff, we're going to try to talk about it. So let me add, I'm working as well for Canonical. I work on integrating GNOME for years and then Unity. Um, something that we are trying to do as well is to have a pure upstream session, like as pure as possible, of course, but to have, depending on the session, like you are choosing the Ubuntu session or the GNOME session. If you are choosing the GNOME session, you have the default theme, uh, GTK, Shell, no extension, and so on. And so I, we are trying to, to do that. And I'm working as well with Alison on some gestating change for this. And one of the proposals I gave, you know, to the Ubuntu GNOME team, you know, for the transition period was for them to keep the GNOME session so that, you know, people using Ubuntu GNOME are transitioned to this pure, you know, like GNOME session. But I didn't get any answer yet. Um, just to the canonical then, uh, what's the difference between you guys and the Ubuntu GNOME community thing? How is the, wha who does what? Because I'm kind of confused. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to answer it, really. I mean, uh, they, they work with us. Yeah. I mean, they we have been. We sort of had to, because uh, Unity and GNOME were very sort of tightly coupled, so like, I'm a member of the Ubuntu desktop team. And we, work, we work together. Yeah. But if you want, we can still have your ISO, you know, with the default Ubuntu, you know, uh, the default, sorry, GNOME, you know, like experience and, and so on. It's something that I guess we need to get some, you know, discussion and final decision on it. Yep. I was just going to mention, um, particularly Unity settings daemon, if you're familiar with that, that's a fork of GNOME settings daemon. And the entire reason we did that was so these guys could make a pure GNOME experience. So we've always been trying to help them in Control Center so a bunch of GNOME can do, you know, what's good and we can work together and live in the same district. So you, you said that a lot of the patches for Unity support will be able to be dropped, but Unity will still be on the CD. So how will that work? Will each not going to be on the CD, but in the repositories? And so does that mean that if you install Unity, then you get a whole set of different libraries that are patched? Or how come the patches can be dropped even though Unity is still? Um, well, I mean, I don't think we'll be able to drop everything. It depends on what level of support we want to continue to provide for Unity. Uh, I mean, there'll probably be some patches of things, but I think like GTK, we can probably remove everything. I mean, at least the Unity specific stuff. And we might have already done that, actually. There's not so many GTK patches. Yeah, I mean, so, so a lot of that core stuff, we've really already removed. Yeah, so yeah, actually, so yeah, that's a good point. The applications before, I mean, we had some patches to things to do diff different things with the header bar and stuff like that. We've dropped all that, and now, now the applications that are Unity will look more like GNOME apps. So, and those were the, actually the bulk of our changes were those kinds of things. Well, what's the status on Wayland? Are you going to ship? Wayland by default in 18.04 or not? We are looking at it. It's likely to be the default this cycle, and next cycle depends on the feedback from this cycle. If it's like to not ready yet for the LTS, we might go back to X. If it's good enough, we might stick to it. We don't know yet. Um, I have a question regarding like features that were in Unity and that I've personally always wanted in GNOME Shell, but that sort of never like made it there. Or I guess it wasn't a priority or something. Like for example, the searchable menus are super cool in Unity, and the last I don't know how many years using GNOME Shell, I was like, please let's get that in GNOME Shell also, but that never happened. Is there any plan to get those kinds of things? Uh, yeah, ask those guys, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, there, there's not a plan right now, but those are certainly the kinds of things we'd be, we would love to talk to the uh, GNOME design team 
um, about because there's a lot of things that, you know, me personally, I love about Unity that aren't in GNOME Shell. Um, so it's, for me, it's been an adjustment to move back to GNOME as well, um, although I've always been a huge GNOME fan. Um, so I would love to see some of that stuff. And uh, I've been talking with uh, Alan. Is Alan in the room? No? Um, uh, about trying to have some more regular dialogue between us um, and, the, and the GNOME design team um, to kind of, you know, we can discuss those types of issues. Hello. Um, so I know that the Ubuntu GNOME community is very much used to a vanilla GNOME experience. But, and, and this is more like an open question, not only for you, but everyone wants to answer. And I did, did ask this yesterday, this kind of question, but is there anything you guys think we, GNOME as a community, can do to ease the transition of um, you know, all these Ubuntu users? Um. Um, it's hard to, hard, hard to say, but um, I don't know. I've, I, we've worked pretty closely with, you know, the upstream GNOME guys, and they've always been helpful. Um, helped us out when we're stuck and all that sort of stuff, so you know, just, yeah, keep on going like it is. Yep. Yeah, we, we do have the all these newcomers stuff going on, and um, but but I know that not every user is a developer, so so if it yeah. would be great if we know how can we ease the transition of all these people, you know, as a community. Yeah, well, I'm sure, there's ways. <laughs> Okay, looks like no more questions, so uh, thank you, Tim.